Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. And I say that in a very special way if this happens to be your very first time to be listening to our Bible study time together. Welcome. Right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Romans and chapter 2. Romans 2. Right now, if possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. I'll be reading verses from Romans 2, but I'll also be quoting some verses, two or three of them, from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. If it's possible to have both those places open, wonderful, but if only one, then make it Romans, please, and chapter 2. Two, I have in front of me a gospel tract. Now listen, we're coming close here. You know it to Christmas time. We have Christmas tracts. If you need Christmas tracts to put in your Christmas cards and give out at Christmas time and hand out as you're buying presents in the store and so on, please, you need to get them from us right away. Uh, I'm going to highlight a different track here in a moment, but listen, friend, if you're going to have Christmas tracks to do Christmas evangelism, you need to pull the trigger on getting from those from us here right away. We'll be giving information about how you can get those free tracks from us here in just a moment. Let me lead, out, though, into our Bible study this way. Yesterday on the broadcast, I mentioned the book of Revelation chapter 1, and that is where the apostle John sees Jesus, but he doesn't see him as he did during his earthly ministry. John in Revelation 1 saw Jesus in what we called yesterday Jesus' judicial appearing. He sees Jesus in a vision, and Jesus is portrayed in symbolic ways. John is seeing Jesus coming to judge the seven churches that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. So Jesus is coming to judge believers. I say all this because our focus today is on the judgment event called the judgment seat of Christ, and that's where the works of believers, not their salvation, but the works of believers will be evaluated. But in Revelation 1, everything that John saw in describing Jesus speaks to Jesus' preparation to be the judge of saints. His clothing there shows his honor and dignity. Jesus' white hair pictures his wisdom. His fiery eyes reveal the penetrating gaze that sees all things perfectly and that he judges with holiness. But then Jesus' glowing feet depicts that he stands ready to trample on all that displeases him, that's unfit. And finally, his roaring voice indicates that his word and judgment is with authority and it's final. I certainly do not know what Jesus will look like when we see him at the judgment seat, but it's wise for us to catch a glimpse of just who it is that will be evaluating our service. To that end, join me in Romans chapter 2. I mentioned a gospel tract a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of how to know Christ as Savior. The one in my hand right now is entitled Ready to Die. It is a track designed to evangelize those that have been or presently are in the military in particular. It's a true story. It's a testimony track of a young man named Dunkley 
And he died in Iraq during his second tour of duty, but he died as a powerful man living for Christ. At his funeral, there were just hundreds of people there, including high-ranking people in the military, because this young man had impacted their lives with the gospel. This gospel track will not only explain the gospel clearly, it will also challenge anyone who reads it who is a believer on how to be a powerful liver of Christ, of how to live out Christ. Oh, friend, ready to die. Powerful track. Get it from us. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org, and order tracks. Get a free sample packet or wait till the end of the program, and my announcer will give you our contact information. Well, I need to get into Romans chapter 2 here. Verses 1 and 2 say this, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest dost the same things. Listen now. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them that commit such things. Let me read verse 6 now. Who, speaking of God, will render to every man according to his deeds. And one more verse, verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. Those are the verses I want to highlight here as we come to our study today. I've read these verses, as I said, out of Romans 2 for one key reason. They give to us some principles, key principles, as to how God judges at least three principles of God's basis for judgment stands out here. And I think these are general principles about whoever and whatever is being judged. Now, as we talk about the standing before him at the judgment seat after the rapture, believers here are going to find from Romans 2 some ideas of how that judgment will be handled based upon these principles. Verse 2 again says, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. Whenever God judges, it is according to truth. There's going to be no inaccurate details present that are going to cloud over the real facts when we stand before him. The second principle is found in verse 6, which says this, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Now, the key idea here is that Jesus judges based upon facts based on the actual deeds people do. Now, nothing is said here about your emotions, only deeds. You may have, I may have some warm, fuzzy feelings in some particular church service, have those warm, fuzzy feelings about Jesus, but he's not judging your warm, fuzzy feelings. You can have all those things from now until the cows come home, but he's going to judge what you and I actually do. Finally, the third principle is found in verse 11, which says, For there is no respect of persons with God. God judges people not on their rank, not on their wealth, not on their birth status. He judges people as people. He's a just judge, and he does not get impressed with our earthly status. Now, with those principles identified, I'm now turning over to 1 Corinthians 3, where in verses 8 through 15, I find some clear statements that help me answer this question. Here's the question. What will Christ be evaluating at the judgment seat? Again, just only believers there. Church age saints are going to be there. And as the saints are there, what will Jesus be focusing on? Well, verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 3 says this, and I'm reading now, every man's work shall be made manifest. That word manifest means visible. Now, just how it will be that God will make our works visible, I don't know. We're not told, but I do know they're going to be made visible. But then verse 13 goes on to say this, and I'm reading again. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, notice here, it's the caliber of our work, or maybe it'd be better for me to put it this way. Jesus will be judging the quality of our work more than the quantity. But stay here in 1 Corinthians 3 with me. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says this, Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. 
I'm going to read that again. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. In this verse, the words every man have first and foremost pastors in view. That's what the immediate context is about. But that being said, the general principles here do apply to all saints. Everyone is going to be evaluated upon what he or she personally did. They are not going to be honored for what others did that they uh, they were part of their church and that they watched them do. No, they're going to be evaluated and judged upon what we actually did. In 1 Corinthians 3, there's a warning. Again, the warning is first and foremost addressed to pastors. Verse 10 puts it this way, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. I have had the privilege of planting a local church. I got to lay the first layer of service there. When I left, after me came other pastors, and their work was done, or was supposed to be done, to build upon and increase what had been started when I was there. But also, I've had the privilege of stepping into two churches that were already established, where I had to build upon what previous pastors had accomplished. Now, the solemn warning was that I had better pay awful close attention to what I was doing, how I was doing it, and so on. God is going to judge my labors. But that same basic principle applies to all of us in our lives If you have grown up in a Christian home in a particular way and you had godly parents who served God, you had a basis, a platform upon which to build and add on to. How are you doing with that? Tell me, are you personally serving in your local church? You ought to be. Let me ask another question. How old is your local church? As I said, I planted a local church. We started the thing, but I also stepped into a church that was 150 years old. So I have to ask the question, how old is your local church? And then did previous generation of godly workers lay a solid foundation by teaching the Bible and then teaching believers how to share the gospel? Has that happened in the history of the church in which you attend? Well, then I ask, are you strengthening that historic work that's been done there? Are you strengthening it? Are you adding on to it? Or are you weakening it? Maybe you need to get some of our gospel tracts and begin to give them out and uh, begin to share the gospel so that your labors can strengthen your local church's ministry. I'm going to tell you, dear listener friend, if you know Christ as Savior, you go share the gospel with people. Now, it may scare you because you say, I may be asked questions that I don't know. Good. It'll drive you back to the Word of God, back to your pastor, back to your Sunday school teacher, and say, hey, I was trying to tell somebody about Jesus, and they asked me this question or that question, and I was fumbling for an answer. Where in the Bible do I have an answer for this? What's going to happen? You're going to strengthen your personal life and your ministry, but you're going to strengthen the others that are around you that are hearing and seeing, here's one of our fellow church people. They're sharing the gospel. They're growing, and you're going to strengthen their lives as well. We are in dire need of strong churches these days. Let's remember, as we serve God in our day, there will come a day when our works shall be evaluated by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.